Like in many other countries, the poultry sector in Uganda is hampered by a number of challenges which are but not limited to the emerging threat of antimicrobial resistance. Currently, it is not clear how many animals die each year due to drug-resistant infections, but globally 700,000 people or more die and by 2050 it is estimated that the deaths could grow to 10 million people. Everyone is at risk because no country with stringent border control and security measures can fully control entry of a resistant germ into a new community. The germs can be carried on our hands, on our clothes, on my travel bags, or any contaminated surfaces. Antimicrobial resistance occurs when bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites change over time and no longer respond to medicines, making infections harder to treat and increasing the risk of disease spread. The value chain mapping shows a number of actors from the hatcheries to the point of poultry product retail. These players are key in the battle to contain the effects of antimicrobial resistance. The worrying drift reported by many farmers, animal health practitioners and policy makers is currently influenced by the level of knowledge, attitudes and practices, ultimately driving the development and spread of the resistance. The challenge we face, some of them, they come in with their prior knowledge, uncertain of what they are treating, they only come and tell you, I want 10%. Last time I used it on this and this and it worked on me. I think give me the very thing. He's not taking history of what is on with the animal and so on. But because he knows that drug specifically could have helped him sometime back or survive it or when he used, he assumes in every situation the same drug is going to work on him. They're addicted to some brands. The International Livestock Research Institute is leading a consortium of implementing partners including Veterinary Sons Frontiers German, the Ministry of Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries. Central to this cause is a remarkable investment in Uganda's livestock sector, an initiative guided by the BMZ 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Our interventions in Uganda are guided by the Global and National Action Plan for AMR. This includes increasing resources in the fight against antimicrobial resistance. In 2019, Uganda received a five-year funding from the German Federal Ministry of Economic uh, Cooperation and Development, also known as uh, BMZ, to implement a program under the theme Boosting Uganda's Investments in Livestock Development. The program has a component on control of antimicrobial resistance along uh, the poultry value chain which seeks to understand the knowledge, attitudes and practices and in incentives for antimicrobial usage in the poultry value chains of Uganda. And uh, the program will also research on antimicrobial resistance transmission dynamics at the human-animal environment interface. This information is important and the data to design and evaluate uh, interventions to reduce antimicrobial use or consumption in poultry value chains in Uganda and also support evidence-based uh, uh, policy dialogue and also uh, build capacity in value chain actors, implementers and researchers. Miss Grace a team, like many farmers, has hands-on experience in managing a poultry farm. For example, when her buds manifest clinical signs like cough, diarrhea, she administers the drugs on her own. Sometimes they develop also diarrhea. Actually, antibiotics are the ones which have helped us to, so much in the, with these buds. But sometimes you find that you have maybe few buds and you mix that uh, medicine, maybe in a jerk kind of, maybe in liters, you know. Now, tomorrow again, you use the same water. Again, another day, you, you find that the, the, this drug is, uh, is already diluted. The antibiotics have really helped, but sometimes they don't work because uh, my idea uh, reasoning would be the wrong prescription. Because you are at the farm, you communicate with the vet, in town, and he 
say A, B, C, D has happened. And then in that process, she would give you what she thinks. Her prescription would be what she would imagine and think based on the circumstance. On Mr. Moses Etonu's farm, you find roaming ducks, rabbits, a pig, zero grazing cows, and pigeons. The open nature of his farm creates a challenge for him to implement strict biosecurity measures. Infections can potentially emerge from any of the livestock on his farm. He suspects that veterinary business has attracted some counterfeits and falsely labeled drugs imported secretly and resold through a network of companies to farmers. There are very many drugs in the market, but other drugs are not whatever, can, are not giving us good results. I think why some drugs are not working is because I think there is a way these drugs sneak in. Or they come in original whatever, then it is repacked, such that when it reaches down here, it's only the, you see the paper, the what, but when you use it, you don't get the results. The use of antibiotics, particularly in disease management, has spectacular gains on production, allowing the industry to cope with the increase in consumer demands. However, lack of access to quality and affordable medicines, vaccines and lack of diagnostics is hurting farmers. Another common bad vice done is blind treatment, which depicts minimal adoption of diagnostics. very many types of drugs. Mixing many types of drugs has caused drug resistance in chickens. The other cause for antimicrobial resistance in birds, we think, is some farmers disregarding drug storage conditions. Our suppliers, the drug shop operators, like in this area of ours, don't stock reasonable drugs for poultry. Like for me, I have my 2,000 birds here. It is hard to go to Yantond and get a package of a litre. They, they, you only have about 100 grams. Eh? And the, most farmers, when he goes there, for him, he intends to buy the package. He buys 100 grams and wants to supply 10, 100, 1,000 birds. So to me, I think there is a lot of underdose when we are applying and we are doing it as farmers. Besides that, Poultry markets in Uganda are potential hotspots for the spread of the resistant organisms because they are informal with no established quality control measures. We buy them from village markets and bring them to town markets. Sometimes there are signs and symptoms that sick birds can present. We give them some local herbs because if you treat them using drugs, it will affect the consumer's health. Many farmers treat the chicken continuously, even when they are about to lay eggs. This affects the quality of the eggs. The market poultry business comes with issues of waste disposal, another potential source of disease spread. Sometimes this ends up on people's farms as manure. We sweep and we clean, actually we collect even the garbage, that garbage. We put them in sacks and sometimes we sell them to the farmers. They go and put in their, their, their gardens as a fertilizer. Uganda's AMR National Action Plan is already on track. The BUILD AMR team have already conducted a national capacity needs assessment, conducted the AMR stakeholder mapping, studies on antimicrobial use, residues and transmission pathways have already been conceptualized and are ready for implementation. But what are the views of some stakeholders in the value chain? My best advice is you at least have a veterinary doctor who keeps checking on you and keeps guiding you because they have the professional skill, they have the knowledge in the types of medicines that you need to feed the birds. From day one, there's a chart that we follow. You begin giving them those vaccinations. What we have learned with poultry, especially this type of ours, when you you religiously follow the schedules to vaccinate the various diseases, Malex, Gumbolo, Newcastle, Typhoid, Fallpox. When you vaccinate according to the schedule, you normally don't get those outbreaks. Actually, in the last five years, I must tell you, that I have not had Newcastle, for example. When the birds are well fed, 
they are also not very much susceptible to diseases. The weakness they have, they always wait up to that season, around November, when they start dying or they see if a neighbor dying, that is when they are running. At all, please, my birds have this and that you get. Eh? And yet, in actual sense, we do encourage them that these are things you have to start early now. Eh? Now that you even have that prior knowledge, like around these seasons, we tend to have that onset. Eh? Why don't we try to be timely? Eh, around June, July, such moments, vaccinate your birds by the time you reach such seasons yourself. And if you have taken these devices. Government should intervene and enforce quality standards. It is the responsibility of government to tame unscrupulous people. And microbial resistance requires urgent multi-sectoral collaborative action to implement already identified control interventions such as awareness and education, surveillance and research to monitor and track changes in antibiograms and antimicrobial use, rational drug use and embracing infection prevention and control, discovery of better drugs, diagnostic tools and vaccines.